In a real estate transaction, fiduciary duties are owed to the, is it A, customer, B, broker, C, agent, or D, principal? What say you? All right. We got Ds. We got Ds. We got Ds. We got Ds. Aren't you glad it's not Bs? Oh, we know where it goes. Um, we got Ds, 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 Ds. <laughs> yes, it is your principal. Remember, your principal is the same as your client. You, the agent, owe your fiduciary duties to your client. Can anybody tell me what those duties are? You might have learned them as loads. You might have learned them as old car. What are these duties? And so, Bella, you said you get a bit confused with the relationship between the client and the principal. The client is your principal. The client is the person who hired you. They are your principal. Right. So that's why it's probably a little confusing because it's really actually the same. So if you were trying to figure out how they were different, I can see it. It's okay. Yeah. So we got obedience, loyalty. Uh, what else do we have? Accounting, confidentiality, care. So if I were to, now I see your back, Maria, what does old car stand for? Go ahead and tell them. Obedience, because I got to do whatever somebody tells me as long as it's my client and it's lawful and not unethical, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I've got loyalty. I can put my uh, needs below yours. Your needs have to go ahead of mine. If I'm your agent or broker and you're my client, it has to go ahead of yours. Then disclosure. I've got to tell you anything. If it's a single agency relationship, I got to tell you anything that's going to give you an edge in your negotiation. We got confidentiality, which goes on forever till I die, unless I get subpoenaed into court. Um, accounting or accountability, keeping track of your paper, your money, doing the right thing. Reasonable skill and care. I don't give you information that I'm not sure about. Right? If you tell me that you want a pool and then you ask me, can I have a pool here? And I don't really know. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever. That's not reasonable skill and care, right? If I don't know it, then I need to help you find it out or find it out for you. Yeah. Yeah, I love So it. of the following, which best characterizes the term single agency? Is it the agent represents one client and dealings with third person? Is it it is a misnomer? There are always two brokers in every transaction. Is it the agent serves two principles in a transaction in which the agent is the listing broker? Or one agent represents both the seller and the buyer in the same transaction. What do you guys think? What do you guys think what on this? say you? Yeah. Right. Oops, okay, this is we got A's, we got A's, we got A's, we got A's. Lots of A's, a couple yep. of D's and C's. I see you, Daisy, with your apple. I see you. Tomorrow, I'll get to sing about that apple. The agent represents one client in dealings with third persons. Now, remember, I was joking around saying earlier, but if I go to a dual agency, then I'm no longer um, that I'm no longer have an old car. I just got a car, right? Because <laughs> my that obedient loyalty to disclosure has to go away. That is true. I love it. If it's a dual <laughs> agency, you ain't got an old car. It's just a car. Right. Good yeah, you, get, you can't be loyal to two competing parties. You can't be disclosing information that harms, harms either side. Okay, Candace, you do this. All right. In a typical agency relationship between the broker and the client, the broker's commission is determined by, and I'll read it again. In a typical agency relationship between the broker and the client, the broker's commission is determined by, is it A, mutual agreement, B, minimums based on the property type, C, state law, or D, the local real estate board. So I am so glad that so many of you all are saying A. And that is the right answer, y'all. The final decision in establishing the listing price is made by the, is it the appraiser, the owner, the salesperson, or the broker? What do you guys think? Who determines the list price? Yes, always the owner has a list price. Now, just because the owner says he wants you to list his house for a certain price, does that mean that once you go out and you give your sales pitch and you show him your CMA that you worked so hard on and all that stuff, if they come out with an answer that you are not comfortable with, do you have to take the listing? Oh. Right. Just because like if somebody wants... asks you out on a date and you don't want to go, I'm... <laughs> if somebody's like, hey, you want to go to McDonald's on a first date? No. You don't have but you to, have to be polite no. about it, right? Just like on a first date. You should be polite when you decline the listing that I've declined listings before. I mean, we've all declined listings before. 
if there's a reason that we don't feel that we can get the job done for what the people are expecting, yeah, we're better to decline it than to get into something that we can't can't get done because the pricing is too high. A prospect for the lease of commercial property feels the need for an adversarial representation and hires a broker to negotiate the lease on his behalf. What is the name of the contract entered into between the prospect and the broker? Hmm. Right. A prospect for the lease of commercial property feels the needs for an adversarial representation and hires a broker to negotiate the lease on his behalf. What is the name of the contract entered to contract entered into between the prospect and the broker? Is it the authorization to negotiate? Is it a buyer broker agreement? Is it a property management agreement? Or is it a cooperative brokerage agreement? So we got A's, we got B's, we got C's. We don't have any. Oh, we got a D. Tucker said E. I'm with you, Tucker, because I hear your voice there. <laughs> In an agency relationship, the person identified as the client is usually the. In an agency relationship, the person identified as the client is usually the. We just talked about this. Is it the subagent? Is it the customer? Is it the principal? Or is it the fiduciary? I oh, see y'all with the right answer. C, of course, it's the principal. Principal. The principal is the client. The client is the principal. If a principal terminates the listing agreement during the listing period, the broker may be able to do any of the following except. Okay, so we're looking for the one he can do, y'all. Recover marketing expenses, continue to cooperate with any subsequent listing broker, encourage termination of any contract in process, or collect a commission for a transaction in process. Which one would he not be able to do? Can do all the following except one of these. Ooh, we're stumping some people on this one, I think. So think Aren't about we? what it says. You're the agent. If your client terminates your listing, Three things you could do, one things you can't. So if you're the seller's agent and your seller cancels the listing, could you recover marketing experiences? Could you continue to cooperate with subsequent listing brokers? Could you encourage them to terminate an already in contract in progress? No. Or could you collect a commission? Now, the answer is clearly C. You can't be bitter and pass the bitterness bus on to everybody else. I'm going down. You going down, down too. Like, you can't do that, man. So I'll tell you another example of this that was a question that I saw the other day. It wasn't one of our questions. It was somewhere else. And the question was, Sally would go to the local uh, community park for an apartment building. And she would go around and tell people, hey, you ought to break your lease and come buy a house. Why are you paying rent? Stop paying rent. Now, what was the problem with what Sally just did? She encouraged people to break a contract and we're not allowed to do that as agents right we can't go and say you should list if candace has a listing and i don't think candace is doing right i can't go up to you and say you should break your listing agreement with candace and come list with me right you should break your lease and go buy a house we cannot encourage people as agents to terminate contracts with other people in order to do business with us all right That's way to get sued exactly <laughs> the broker was negligent in preparing a sales contract and allowed the purchaser to void the agreement the broker has breached the following duty owed to her client. Was it personal performance, due care, honesty, or accuracy? So the answer is care. Right? All so right. it's the idea you got to owe care. It's that C. Well, the C for care or confidentiality, depending on which one you're using. Now I'm going to do the long one. I, I'm going to take the challenge. A seller had a listing with ABC firm. The listing expired after 90 days and the seller never renewed the contract. Six months after the listing expired, a new Sweet. agent started with ABC Firm and came across the unsold listing. He wanted to call the seller, but noticed the seller's number on the national do not call registry. Can the agent contact the seller? So this has to do with, remember how long can we contact people after the contract if they're on the do not call list? Okay, the answer is number one, or is the answer number one, A, no, because the seller's number is on the National Do Not Call Registry, even if the seller is currently active. No, because the seller's number is on the Do Not National Do Not Call Registry, and the seller never contacted the agent to relist the home. 
Is it yes, because the firm had a re- has had a relationship with the seller in the last 18 months, which is the correct answer? Or is it yes, because the firm had a relationship with the seller in the last three months? Now, what's our three-month thing with the do not call list? Remember this, you guys. If somebody calls me, we don't have a relationship. Let's say I put in the ad in the paper and Candace calls me. She's on the do not call list and she says, tell me about this house. Does it have four bedrooms? Does it have a, a jacuzzi tub, blah, blah. She's reached out to me. Until she tells me to quit calling her back, I got three months that I can continue to call her back and try to pitch something to her, right? But only because she reached out to me first. Here, it's different because we actually had an established relationship, right? If I had an established relationship with the client. All right, next question. When an agency relationship ends, which of the following duties does not continue? When an agency relationship ends, which of the following duties does not continue? Is it accounting for money? Is it confidentiality? Is it loyalty? Or is it accounting for property? Uh, And while people are answering that, uh, somebody asked, what is can spam? That is the law or the act that makes it illegal for you to use porn and emails. And as part of that, it says, if you're sending out mass emails, you have to have an unsubscribe button. You have to give people, you know, an address where to reach you, like a mailing address. You have to have the subject line or your header match the topic of what's in the um, emails. It was a... Uh, C, 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 C. Well, let me go back. I messed up. I'm sorry, guys. It was the, it was loyalty did not continue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Loyalty. Broker car, last, last one of the nine. Broker car with ABC Real Estate Company. List the property with the seller. Broker Smith with XYZ Real Estate Company called Broker Carr and disclosed that he was a buyer's agent, which is good for him. We always should disclose to the other agent who we represent, right? Broker Smith wrote a contract with the buyer for the sale of the property. What, if any, is the relationship between the buyer's broker and the listing broker? Is it so agency? Guys, when you have long it's- questions like this, reread them and yeah. think about it. You got Broker Carr with ABC who listed. You got Broker Smith with XYZ. What is the relationship between the two brokers? Yeah. One broker has the seller. One broker has the buyer. And there is no relationship between the two of them. I mean, they might be friends, but there's no agency relationship between the two of them because they're they're representing two different parties. They're from two different firms. There you go. Very so 